Hidden behind the vast blue expanse of the Central Asian skies, there are silent competitions ongoing, not merely a technological showdown. It's where vision and strategic intellect are demonstrated, where the Iron Birds are more than just war machines. They are the spirits scripting the grand history, influencing the future of an entire continent. It's the clash between the Phoenix Shadows in the Rafale skies and the Super War Eagle Su-30SM, a dance full of emotion on the canvas of mystique. Before we embark on today's adventure, let's take a moment to recharge the positive energy for our knowledge squad by subscribing to the channel, turning on notifications, and especially sharing this video to motivate the team and anticipate the latest promising military knowledge. Now, without further ado, let's delve back into the fascinating insights that we will explore together on today's journey. In the midst of the 1970s, both the French Air Force and Navy laid out requirements for a new generation of combat aircraft to replace the aging fleets. Due to the similar demands from both forces, as well as for cost-saving purposes, in 1975, the French Aerospace Agency began researching a new aircraft to complement the lightweight Mirage 2000 fighter jet. Each type of aircraft could be optimized for various roles. By 1983, the future European fighter aircraft program was initiated, gathering ideas from Italy, Spain, West Germany, France and the UK to jointly develop a fighter aircraft. However, eventually only France and Spain participated fully. This collaborative program led to the birth of the Rafale aircraft in 1985. The first flight test took place on July 4, 1986. The technical performance demonstrated by this aircraft impressed the French Ministry of Defence, leading to a series of orders in 1988. This was seen as a milestone in France's strategic transition after the Cold War era as the world witnessed a shift from single-minded war-focused strategies to diversity or multitasking. The Rafale emerged as an icon of innovation and modernity in combat capabilities. Other tests were still being conducted, including carrier landings and M88 engine tests, before the Rafale became operational in 1994. It had to undergo many trials under various weather conditions and climates. With three Rafale variants in the initial production order, Rafale C, single-seat fighter for the French Air Force, Rafale B, two-seat fighter, and Rafale M, single-seat fighter, operating on aircraft carriers dedicated to the Navy. As of 2021, Egypt has purchased 54, Greece has bought 18, while India and Qatar each have bought 36 aircraft of various versions. Although not inexpensive, the Rafale and its variants are considered quite successful and have attracted the attention of many countries. The Su-30SM from the Russian side was announced a bit later in the 1980s, developed against the backdrop of the Russian Federation, undergoing significant political changes during the decline of the Soviet Union. The Su-30SM was born with the aim of improving combat capabilities and defending the Russian territory in a world facing many new security challenges and numerous competing adversaries. It is a variant in the Su-30 Flanker series, designated by NATO as Flanker. This is a multi-role supersonic fighter aircraft capable of performing air superiority, ground attack and maritime strike missions. The Su-30 series is a modernized version of its predecessor, the Su-27UB, and subsequent variants such as the Su-30K or Su-30MK have achieved commercial success the difference in nomenclature arises from the aircraft produced by two competing subsidiaries, Kanai Apo and Urkut, both under the control of the Sukhoi Group. Kanai Apo produces the Su-30 MKK and Su-30 MK2 designed for sale to China and Vietnam, while Irkut produces the Su-30 MKI long-range multi-role aircraft, including the Su-30 MKI developed for the Indian Air Force and the Su-30 MKM and Su-30 MKA tailored for the Malaysian and Algerian markets, respectively. The Su-30SM fighter aircraft, a variant of the Russian Su-30 series, incorporates a certain amount of non-metallic materials into its structure, including composite materials such as fiberglass and Kevlar. The use of such non-metallic materials can help reduce the overall weight of the aircraft and improve flight performance. 
Fiberglass is commonly used in applications requiring high stiffness and strength, while Kevlar is known for its puncture and bullet-resistant properties. When used in aircraft structures like the Su-30SM, these materials can be employed in parts such as the fuselage, wings, and various components to reduce weight and increase load-bearing capacity. Both the Rafale and Su-30SM are the result of continuous efforts in the research and development of fighter aircraft, with the Rafale featuring flexible design, advanced technology, and multi-role combat capabilities reflecting France's commitment to international strategy and adaptable response capabilities on global battlefields. The Su-30SM, with its power and speed, demonstrates Russia's commitment to defending territorial integrity and effective combat capabilities in the skies, as they can operate in various environments. Both the Rafale and Su-30SM are unique achievements of their respective countries with outstanding advantages, and this diversity reflects not only the complexity of aerospace technology but also the international political context that each country must face. So, while a French aircraft is proving its sales on the international market, what impact does a previously mainly domestic market Russian aircraft have in the Central Asian region? The weapons market is becoming a crucial hotspot, attracting the attention of many countries and weapon manufacturers. Worldwide, due to the continuously changing geopolitical and security situation, prompting many countries in the region to increasingly enhance their defense capabilities, seeking modernization solutions for their armed forces. Countries in this region always have diverse weapon needs, from fighter jets, warships, missile systems, to even nuclear weapons. This creates an immensely potential market where weapon manufacturers need to provide customized solutions to meet the specific needs of each country. Moreover, the race among international partners also makes this market a competition between giant weapon manufacturers from many countries such as France, Russia, the US, or China, all competing to provide defense solutions and weapons to many affluent members in this region. Paris is actively seeking ways to penetrate the arms sales market here with the Rafale aircraft, hoping to replace Russian-made aircraft in Central Asian countries that have long used weapons produced by Russia. It's clear that Paris desperately needs big deals, especially after the US and the UK excluded Russia from a submarine supply contract to Australia. Previously, France planned to provide Australia with 12 nuclear submarines worth about $66 billion, but Australia has now cooperated with the US and the UK in the face of French helplessness. In that context, France has intensified the development of new markets, and it's no surprise after its success in India with the transfer of Rafale fighter jets to the country's air force. Paris wants to continue reaching out to other markets, including the particularly promising Central Asia. Evidence is that many French representatives have recently been frequenting Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan to broker deals for the Rafale. At the same time, they're also receiving certain attention. French President Emmanuel Macron himself visited Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan from November 1 to November 2, 2023, along with a series of ceremonial visits by the President of Uzbekistan on November 21 and November 29, 2023. After the visits of the heads of Uzbekistan, France believes that its Rafale aircraft are far superior to any aircraft Russia could produce. Therefore, France began to celebrate its victory in the arms market. In fact, at the end of November 2023, the BFM television channel reported that Central Asian countries want new aircraft and are considering suppliers in France. However, Kazakhstan has officially denied considering the purchase of Rafale fighter jets from France and expressed its intention to buy a similar version like the domestically produced Su-30SM aircraft from Russia, citing the cost advantage as highly suitable for the quality. Thus, Despite France's increased efforts to promote the sale of Rafale fighter jets, the Kazakh Air Force ultimately decided to procure the Su-30SM fighter jets made by Russia. The deputy commander of the Air Defense, head of the Weapons Department of Kazakhstan, was quoted as saying in early December 2023 that the country would express interest in buying 10 Su-30SM fighter jets 
along with two sets of Tor M2 air defense systems from Russia. The Su 30 SM and Tor M2 weapon systems are expected to be equipped between 2023 and 2024. He also stated, We have no plans to purchase Rafale fighter jets produced in France because they are expensive. Instead, we chose the Su 30 SM fighter jets due to the balance between quality and price. This statement seems to mark the end of the efforts that France has been making for months to market the Rafale fighter jets to Central Asian countries like Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. So far, there have been no reports from Uzbekistan regarding the country's consideration of purchasing Rafale fighter jets. Although Uzbekistan officials had previously expressed interest in buying 24 Rafale fighter jets developed by France, speaking of prices, on May 4, 2021, Egypt announced that it had signed a deal with France to purchase 30 Rafale jets for $4.5 billion, equivalent to about $150 million each through a minimum 10-year financing loan. The latest agreement came just four months after Greece confirmed a $3.01 billion contract for 18 Rafale jets, including weapons, six new ones, and 12 used ones to be taken from the French Air Force. According to the agreement, Six of the used Rafale jets will be delivered at a rate of one per month starting from July 2021. The six new jets will be delivered in the spring of 2022, followed by the final six used jets handed over in early 2023. Another drawback is that countries wanting to buy Rafale cannot use the existing land-to-air missiles in their arsenal, but must use France's specific type of missile. On the other hand, the cost for the Su-30 MKI version that India once purchased was around $62 million. Although still very cost-effective compared to Western fighter jets like Rafale, the cost is still higher than the Su-30 SM version, which is priced at around $35 to $37 million, with estimated basic operating costs below $25 million. The reason why Central Asian countries hesitate to approach French fighter jets is that they believe these expensive and complex aircraft exceed their financial capabilities, accompanied by the need to overhaul logistics, technical and training procedures, mostly based on Russia's defense industry model since the Soviet era. For his part, Russian President Vladimir Putin has expressed concerns about Western efforts to separate Russia from its ties with Central Asian countries. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has declared that Western countries are attempting to lure neighboring countries, partners, and allies away from Russia. This isn't the first time that the Kremlin has expressed concern about Western efforts in Central Asia. As former Soviet states, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan rely heavily on weapons produced by Russia, and they both have plans to retire old, Soviet-era combat aircraft produced by the Soviet Union and replace them with more modern ones. Specifically, the Kazakh Air Force plans to retire its MiG-29 fighter jets, while the Uzbek Air Force will gradually phase out its Su-27 fighter jets. Additionally, besides the MiG-29, Kazakhstan is also offering for sale over 100 combat aircraft and bombers manufactured during the Soviet era to interested parties at low prices. These old Soviet-era combat aircraft, along with their engines including the MiG-31, MiG-27, and Su-24 were built during the Cold War era from the 1970s to the 1980s. So initially, French modern aircraft were considered to have more commercial potential in the Central Asian skies. However, in reality, they seem to be at a disadvantage compared to the Su-30SM and its variants. So besides price issues, Let's briefly discuss some technical factors to understand why the balance is gradually shifting. In terms of combat aircraft specifications, the Su-30SM is equipped with Saturn AL-31FL engines with a speed of up to Mark II, a maximum altitude of about 17.3 km and a range of 3,000 km. Combined with the ability to carry up to 8 tons of weapons, this fighter jet has become a milestone in multi-role combat. Aircraft capable of operating in various terrains for various missions. The NUO Alavanem Bars radar system, 
passive electronically scanned array radar and vector thrust control system also help the Su-30SM perform high maneuver or support combat effectively. The aerodynamic shape combined with the engine thrust vector control capability has brought unprecedented flying maneuverability along with a unique landing and takeoff characteristic. Equipped with the fly-by-wire Su-30MK control system capable of performing maneuvers that can only be performed on modern Russian fighter jets, including the Pugachev Cobra maneuver or performing a 360-degree rotation while flying up or diving down on a plane without losing altitude. While the French Rafale features the Snecma M88-2 engine with a speed of up to Mach 1.8 and a maximum altitude of about 15 kilometers, its range is approximately 3,700 kilometers, carrying various weapons from anti-ship missiles to a variety of modern bombs. If the Su-30SM has aerodynamic design, then the delta wing design on the Rafale also provides flexibility in multi-role combat and stability in many complex missions. The Thales RBE-2 radar system and the Spectra electronic warfare system help the Rafale detect and track targets extremely accurately. Additionally, for the first time in aviation history, the Rafale is equipped with an integrated electronic system named Spectra, with stealth capabilities based on software techniques. But the most important sensor is the Thales RBE-2 multi-mode passive electronically scanned array radar, which Thales claims has achieved the highest situational awareness level ever. By monitoring and early tracking many airborne targets for close combat or long-range intervention, real-time three-dimensional maps for ground tracking and high-resolution real-time maps for targeting are provided. That's a bit about the technical specifications. Now, the most important aspect, which also influences competition in the Central Asian market, is combat experience. Firstly, the Su-30 series, including the Su-30SM variant, has never engaged in combat in an actual war. However, it has demonstrated its capabilities in exercises with a very high victory rate. Even against advanced Western fighters like the F-15 Eagle or F-16 Falcon, specifically in the Cope India 2004 exercise, Indian Air Force. Su-30 MKI fighters conducted mock battles against US Air Force F-15C fighters. The astounding result was a 9-1 victory in favor of the Indian pilots, meaning one Su-30 MKI could take on nine F-15s. A US Air Force officer stated that an Indian pilot maneuvered a Su-30 MKI to perform the Pugachev Cobra maneuver, slowing down to zero speed for a few seconds, causing the radar on the US fighter to lose track of the opponent. That was enough time for the Su-30 to take out the F-15. The US side explained that their restrictive rules of engagement limited their winning capabilities because during the exercise, India deployed 18 aircraft, including six Su-30 MKIs and 12 MiG-21 Bisons, to combat six US F-15Cs, while also requiring the US not to use ASA radar. Another example is when the Russian Ministry of Defense confirmed on October 1, 2015, that Russia had deployed over 50 combat aircraft and helicopters from the Russian Air Force, including four Su-30SMs, to the Latakia Air Base in Syria to support the Syrian government forces against the self-proclaimed Islamic State, S. Militants. The Russian Su-30SMs performed excellently in tasks such as ground target strikes, providing air cover for Su-25 and Su-24 attack aircraft, and intercepting foreign aircraft violating Syrian airspace. On the other side, the Rafale has participated in NATO's civil campaign in 2011 to protect civilians and limit the military capabilities of the Libyan government. In 2015, it carried out missions in the international campaign against IS, conducting both airstrikes and reconnaissance missions in Iraq and Syria. Additionally, this aircraft has also provided valuable support to NATO in the Mali campaign in 2012 and in Afghanistan in 2001. Finally, in the skies of Central Asia, 
as thin clouds drift by. The confrontation between the Rafale and the Su-30SM is not just a showdown of technology and strategy, but it also represents the pride of each nation. It's a meeting of tradition and modernity, a symphony of courage and the thirst for freedom. So, what are your thoughts on the future of these two aircraft? Feel free to leave your comments below. Don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on the latest military knowledge videos. For now, until we meet again in the next videos, wishing everyone a warm day with family.